Paul wrote a note to the believers at Philippi containing instructions. And even though these instructions were written well over 2,000 years ago, you should be aware that these instructions are applicable to the lives of the believers. I don't care what generation you belong to. The Bible, if it was good enough for your mother and your father, your grandfather, your grandmother, your ancestors, the apostles and the disciples of old, it is good enough for you. And one of the things that's happening in this world is people are trying to convince other people mm -hmm. that the Bible is not applicable to today. Mm. But I want, you, I want to remind each and every one of you that the Bible stands. Yes. It is the number one bestseller book in all of the world, it's not because of man, it is because of God. Amen. God intends for his word to accomplish that which he purposed it to accomplish. Amen. So therefore it is effective and beneficial and fruitful that believers and non-believers should open the book and read it and then begin to study it. Amen. And after you begin to study it, to apply it to your lives mm -hmm. so that you can embark on being holy. Amen. Because God is not going to lower the standard of holiness mm -hmm. that he requires for those who follow him mm -hmm. and those who believe in him and those who are sons and daughters. All right. mm -hmm. He requires it and he is not going to change. Mm -hmm. So it is in our best interest for us to change. Amen. Philippians chapter 4, verse 12 through 13 says, I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Thus ends the reading of God's holy word. You may be seated. In verse 12, Paul tells us that he knows how to be abased and he knows how to abound. In other words, what he's saying is, I know how to be low. I know how to be humble, given the situation. This is interesting because there are a lot of Christians, a lot of people of the world, who don't know how to be humble, who don't know how to be low. Everybody wants to be on top. Everybody wants to be on top so much so that they climb up on other people and they step on other people so that they can be high. But God wants you to know today, you do not have to step on other people in order to rise. God wants you to love your neighbor, to respect your neighbor, to respect all men and women, no matter what they are doing. And if you obey and you honor and you show humility to man and to God, God will exalt you in due season. So there is no need for you to compare your spiritual gifts to another person's spiritual gifts. There's no reason for you to put down someone else's gifts or that person in order to make yourself feel better. God says, Paul is saying, I have learned to be low. I have learned to be humble in the correct situations. He goes on to say, and I know how to abound. You know, when certain people become prosperous, they don't know how to act. If you look at all of the people who have won the lottery, and I don't play the lottery, but I'm using this as an example. If you look at the people who have all of a sudden come into money, years later, the majority of them become broke because they lose their mind. See, some people, when prosperity comes, when good things come to them, they just forget how to act. They forget how their mother raised them. They forget how their father raised them. It seems like good sense just goes out the window. But Paul is saying, I have learned how to act when I'm prosperous. Don't you know that there's going to be situations in life that you encounter that you don't know, that you feel like you're not prepared for, or you don't feel like you know what to do? 
Even Paul says this. He says, I know how to do these things. But he said, I learned. Key word. He was taught how to behave when he was low or when there was trying times. And he was taught how to behave when things are going well. The thing about it is that he learned it and it takes a certain mindset for people to learn. I've often said that the best person that I can encounter is a person who's teachable. How many of you know that many people in this day and age are not teachable because they feel like they know it all? Don't you know that when you mm, when God reveals truth to you, when God is trying to teach you something, and you reject that truth, you're telling God that you know it all. And then God can't use you. And so what God will do, because he needs you to do something, because he created you to do something, he created everyone with a purpose. And it is our best interest to forget what it is that we want and come to understand what it is that God requires from us and what God wants us to do. Because when you satisfy God, then you can be prosperous. When you satisfy God, you can learn. Too many people want to acquire things and not be teachable. Too many people want to acquire things but don't want to take the time that it takes to learn how to deal with situations. Paul tells us that there's a secret that people should come to understand. And that secret is found in the 13th verse. It says, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Now, it's a secret because not too many people want to open up their Bible and read about the secret. Not too many people want to continue to read their Bible to learn how to apply the secret to their life. Don't you know that this is a secret that is like totally available to everyone, but because people are more concerned about their own life and their own desires, they discount what they see. I'm here to let you know that there's also a misconception about this particular verse. People read it and say, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Wait a minute. The Bible reader understands that the will of God has something to do with everything in the Bible. The will of God has something to do with everyone's life. So where you could say, you know, I can run a mile in three minutes because Christ is strengthening me, that may not be so. And you might go and try to run a mile and find out you didn't run that mile in three minutes. Does that mean that the word is a lie? Or does that mean that you were amiss? People think this applies to everything, but it only applies to the will of God. You can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens you to accomplish the will of God in your life. That is what this particular text means. I can do all things. Let's explore this. I can do all things, but you also should go to Proverbs and you should grab the statement to say, that says, lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge God and he will direct your path. Right. When God directs your path, you will understand what it is that you should strive to do. And then Paul's word is saying that you will be able to do it because Christ is strengthening you. If you grab Proverbs, the appropriate chapter and verse, you will le learn that when you do lean to your own understanding and then you go to Philippians and you grab this verse, the two don't correspond. They're still both true, but because you're trying to match the word to what you want to happen, it's not going to work out. How many of you know that many people try to take the word of God and erroneously apply it to something that they want to accomplish? Something that's selfish, that has nothing to do with the word of God. 
but they want to take God's word and say, this is how I'm going to apply it to my life. But now they've taken it out of context. And so when it doesn't come to pass, they say, oh, it's not me. It's God. Oh, it's not me. It's God's word. I'm here to let you know today that we have to understand what the will of God is for our lives. And then we can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. Through Christ Jesus, who strengthens you. Let's elaborate on that. I have a question for you. Is Christ sufficient? I heard a couple of woes. I heard a couple of yeses. When Christ came into this world, he was the only person who could take away the sins of the world. He was the only one who was sufficient to do the job. Since you all said that Christ is sufficient, if Christ is strengthening you, what does that mean about you? Someone said you're sufficient. You are sufficient. And the problem is that the world and Satan and some people who you think are your friends who are really not your friends are telling you that you are not capable, you are not sufficient, and you cannot do the job. But my Bible tells me by inheritance, because Christ Jesus is sufficient and all power is in his hands, and if he is strengthening you, don't you know that you're sufficient? So then the question I have for you is, why do so many people doubt themselves? If you call yourself a Christian and if Christ is strengthening you and you have the Holy Spirit in, inside of you, why do you doubt yourself? Why do you fear to do something? Don't you know that you are sufficient and you have the power to do Almost anything under the sun, as long as God has commissioned you, charged you to do it. People should remove doubt from their mind and at least try to do it. There's some people where they doubt and they don't even try to do it. You will find that at least if you try to do it, when you take the first couple of steps, you'll see that you have success and that'll give you the impetus to keep moving forward. You are more than qualified. How many of you know that if God calls you to a task, he has equipped you for the task. And all you have to do is follow his steps and get the job done. Let's talk about who strengthens you. And we know that Christ strengthens us. But what does strengthen mean? What does that mean? That's a very ge ge generic term. He strengthens you. He can, one person said he encourages you. Gives you the power to do what you need to do, someone else said. When God strengthens you, he gives you the inner strength to do something. Now, if he gives you the inner strength to do something, there's another two words that I want you to recognize that you could replace strengthens me with. God gives you the inner fortitude to persevere and to do what it is that you need to do. Don't you know that in this life, if you do not have inner fortitude, when the storms of life come, you will not be able to thrive. There will be tests that God allows to come to you where you require internal fortitude. I would think of it as this. Do you know that the human being would not be able to stand up if you didn't have a spine? If you did not have a spine, there's no way you could stand up. God has given you a spine. Follow me here. And this spine is not something that's overly flexible. 
like the human spine, God has given us, if you follow me here, God has given you a rod inside of you that is strong. It is a piece of metal which strengthens you, empowers you, and sustains you at all times. Inner fortitude, inner strength. How do you develop this internal fortitude that God has given you? God has given you something, but it's up to you to use it. It's up to you to leverage it. How do you come about to have strong internal fortitude? And I submit to you that not everyone has the same amount of internal fortitude. And some people become super, super successful, and some people become unaccomplished and don't, don't achieve what it is that they should achieve. You call them underachievers, where they have power, but they don't apply and use that power to become anything worthwhile. I submit to you today that God strengthens you, but you have some things you have to do to increase this internal fortitude. It's like God has given everybody muscles, but why can some people lift 200 pounds and some people can't? It's because some people go to the gym or some people work out in their house and they, or their apartments and they exercise. What I'm talking to you about today is God has given you and strengthens you, but you, there's some exercising that each and every one of us is responsible for, and it makes a difference on what you accomplish and what you don't accomplish in this life. And what keep in mind that if you don't accomplish certain things in this life, you don't get a second chance. And if you don't accomplish the things that God purposed for you to be brought into this life, then you are disappointing God. And I don't know about you, but I do not want to disappoint God. I want God to be proud of me at the end of the day. So I make it my business to exercise, to develop my internal strength. And this is what every Christian should be doing, not on every Sunday, not on every Saturday, not two times a week, but every day you should be exercising to develop your internal strength and have internal fortitude because that is the only way besides putting on the whole armor of God. That is the only way that you are going to stand in these days of trouble. Amen. How do you develop internal and exercise internal fortitude by prayer? You have to reach out and talk to God on a regular basis, whatever it is that you require whether it's you can't do it for yourself or you know that you need assistance that can only come through God or you need assistance from God to send you the right person to help you out, you need to ask God. My Bible tells me you have not because you ask not. So don't complain when you don't have what you need because you never ask God for it. And don't you know when you ask God for things, you have opened the door for God to start having a conversation with you and start communicating with you. And when you do those things, here's what God, God is, God's a God who takes advantage of situations. When you open up the door to ask God for one thing, God begins to address other things in your life. And some of these things you're not even aware, but in that communication, God is sending you subliminal messages. God is doing things behind the scenes that you are not even aware of. And one of the things that God, you can ask for it, but one of the things that you develop out of a relationship with God and having prayer with God is God increases your faith. You know, there's a difference between certain people because their measure of faith, God has given everybody a measure of faith because if you didn't have a measure of faith, you would never believe in Jesus Christ. You didn't, come to, you didn't come by your own to believe in Jesus Christ. God planted a seed within you, a measure of faith that caused you to believe because God wanted you to be part of his kingdom. Amen. 
But when you have a conversation with God, when you're asking him for things, God begins to bless you in other ways and he increases your faith because he understands that your faith needs to be increased so that your internal fortitude and your internal strength can also be increased. Because if you don't believe that you can do certain things, then you won't do those certain things and you have to have the faith in God and faith in yourself. And so behind the scene, God begins to build up and work on your faith. So prayer is extremely important and it's closely linked to faith, which is the second point. First point being prayer, second point being faith. The third point is that you begin to develop a relationship with Christ. It said through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. How can Jesus strengthen you if you don't have a relationship with him? It can't happen. Anybody who does not have a serious relationship with Jesus Christ, this statement doesn't apply to you. You have to have a relationship with Jesus Christ in order for him to strengthen you. Let me ask you a question. There's a person you don't even know their name, but they're in need. They, they, they desire something, but they don't live close to you. And you would need to wire them money in order to help them out. If you have no information or no contact information with that person, how can you help them? If you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, him helping you out, setting aside God's grace and mercy now, okay? If you don't have a, a relationship with Jesus Christ, your contact information is blurry. If he's reading a paper and he's going down a list of names of the people he's going to strengthen today, your contact information is blurry because you don't have that relationship with him. You haven't reached out to his father and said, God, I need your help. I recognize that I can't live this life by myself. I recognize that I need you. And then God says, OK, if you since you have recognized that you need me, then you need to accept my son. So I'm going to plant a seed in you. So you come to accept him. And so then you believe with your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. But God then expects you. That's not good enough. God wants you to develop and continue to develop a relationship with his son. I know a lot about God. I know a lot about Jesus. I have sat at the feet of some very wise and Holy Ghost filled people. But even that, there's a lot that I don't know. And I work continuously to develop my relationship with God, my relationship with Jesus Christ, because I recognize that my life depends on it. Don't you know that when God lifts you up and plants you on different levels in life, there's different types of demons and spirits that you have to deal with. Mm -hmm. There's different types of people you have to deal with. And so if you just got to that level, guess what? Like Paul said, there's certain things that you're not necessarily equipped to deal with. But through the strengthening and the relationship that you have with Jesus Christ, since you are sufficient, you can deal with them. Relationship with Christ is very, very important. One of my favorite scriptures is 2 Timothy verse 2, chapter, chapter 2, verse 15. It says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman who needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You have to know how to use the word of God, rightly dividing. You have to know how to use the word of God to encourage yourself, to encourage believers around you, and to use God's word as a weapon when time surfaces. Jesus Christ, when he was led into the wilderness, he did not preach sermons when he was confronted with the devil. He didn't think or lean to his own understanding when it came to responding to the devil. All he did was Quote, scriptures. You must come to understand what the scripture said because you will be tested. It says, try the spirit by the spirit. 
There will be spirits that you encounter in these last days where you will need the word of God to fend them off. And God is not going to step in because he expects you to have study to show yourself approved unto God. So that when that spirit comes or that evil and wicked person comes, that you can withstand them. So then you can be shown as approved unto God. God is not always going to come to the rescue. If you're not doing the job, you sometimes, if God decides to withhold his grace and mercy, he will let you go through. So next time when you have the opportunity to pray without ceasing and to study his word, that you do so because you know that there's a lot at stake. And if you don't know that there's a lot at stake, let me tell you, there is a lot at stake Today, right now. When you study to show yourself approved unto God, when you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, when you have increasing faith and when you have prayer day in and day out, what's going to happen to you? You're going to learn to have confidence in God. And confidence in God can push you through things that you would not normally be able to get through. Confidence in God causes God to open up doors that he might not otherwise open for you. Confidence in God will cause your enemies to become your footstools and people who were oppressing you to all of a sudden the shift has changed and you find yourself on top because you had confidence in in God. Someone said they, they, they pray for the increase of the hedge of protection around them. At least they have confidence in God to know that there's a hedge of protection around them. And I don't know about you, but I ask God regularly to keep his hedge of protection around me. I don't take anything about God, his blessings or what he does for me for, for granted. When you have this confidence in God, you also come to understand that you should have confidence in yourself. Let me tell you, there is no one that you are not their equal. God did not bring you this far for you to have an inferiority complex about you compared to anyone in the world. I don't care where they are, what they are doing, and how much they know. You are not to have an inferior, inferiority complex about yourself if God is in you and God, you are a member of the body of Christ. If you have this inner strength and you have this confidence and you have this internal fortitude, you get something else. A lot of people say, I, I just want peace in my life. When you get older, you learn that the most valuable things is your time and peace. Everything else, it, it doesn't matter. Money begins to fade away. Uh, jobs begin to fade away. And when you get older or you get wiser, you come to understand, please give me peace and please give me time. That's all that becomes important to you. If you have this inner strength, then the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, and you can find this in Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and minds through Christ Jesus. I pray that you don't take for granted what God has done for you. Don't take for granted the blessings of God. God is a God of talents. He has given you talents and he expects you to return threefold, fourfold, hundredfold. He didn't give you the faith of a mustard seed to overcome mountains just to maintain a faith of a mustard seed all of your life. In order to have you know, here's what I wish for the people of God. I wish for the people of God that they become so powerful and so self-aware that the 
unknowing person would call you arrogant. Arrogant because they see that you have power and you are aware of your power. You have confidence and you are aware of your confidence. You have empathy and you are aware of your empathy. You have love and you have... Mm, you have awareness of the love and the power of love that you have. I wish that people who didn't know God would call every Christian arrogant because they had all of the things that I just mentioned. And the call comes through Christ Jesus strengthening you and you have this internal fortitude that says no matter what situation comes to me, I know I'm going to win. I know I'm going to be victorious. I know that I'm going to come through. I wish that every Christian had internal fortitude and I can tell you, you can get it by asking God for it, by exercising your spiritual well-being and your spiritual health each and every day. And I tell you, there will be nothing that you as an individual, according to the will of God, there will be nothing that you cannot do, that you will not achieve. You will, one individual will send 1,000 to flight and all of the individuals will send tens of thousands to flight. So I pray, don't be arrogant. Let the persons think that you're arrogant. There's a difference now. There's some arrogant people out there. And I, I can see clearly, there's that song, I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see clearly and I see that some people are arrogant. Don't become arrogant. That's not what the message is saying. Allow people who are not really, don't have that clarity to think you are arrogant. How many of you have encountered a person where you say, oh, that person is arrogant? Yes. But when you got to know the person, your thoughts about that person change. That's what you're to become. Just understand who you are in Christ. Stop doubting yourself. Have the internal fortitude that causes you not to feel inferior to anyone, to be envious of anyone. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Good work, Pastor.